Alrighty, welcome back to another Brainstream where we talk about the future of the computer, the future of the operating system, the future of humans, and how we are going to interface with our devices and what is that going to look like. This is usually a Brainstream is about 10 minutes long, right? And I go through, I've, I've worked in this field for over a decade. Uh, my name's Abraham, by the way. And um, I basically am going to share conversations, things I've heard, projects I'm working on, products, things like that. Uh, I'm going to continue on from yesterday, where we, first of all, talked about the animations, which uh, I think I fangirled over for like a good three or four minutes. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at yesterday's brainstream and also take a look at the newest animations iOS 17, which is name name drop animation, and look at well, like sharing between phones, tapping them, and the the new Siri animation. Check those out. Um, but then we went into this idea, and we're moving into this direction of what is the operating system of the future look like? Um, how's that going to work? So there's there's Layer OS, which is this kind of concept that we've been speaking about. I think for two or three videos we kind of went a little bit more into it. Uh, then the idea of the conversation being a huge part of it, and the idea that um, when you look at like, let's say um, vision, let's say the eyes versus the mouth uh, with the operating system, the the interaction, eyes are, you know, vision is about 99%. Uh, sound, audio has always been maybe 1%, 2%. And it's always been more for consuming. Uh, it's been more entertainment, things like that. And I think a very, very big shift is going to be where voice reclaims about 20%. Um, vision will go back to about 8, 80. So it'll be like, let's say 80, 20. Um, give or take. Uh, and voice is going to be a very big part of the conversation. Um, if you want to look at uh, my thoughts on them, look at the last three brain streams where I go into. Um, but where this is going to be very interesting is this idea of how we're going to work between them, how conversations are going to be a big part of it and what the UI of that is going to look like and what the UI is going to look like in layer OS and how they're going to merge together. And this is where it gets like exciting because each has its own power, and they're going to work so seamlessly with each other. It's not that one is better than the other. It's it's each has a different power, and I think what's exciting about conversational UI and what's exciting about per, you know personal assistants and exciting about this generative AI LLMs um, is we're seeing such power with text to be able to get conversations into that and to also bring vision where you can train the product where we talked about this idea of like what well, the teach me mode which i went into also which was the concept that i released and said hey i wish apple did like a teach me mode where i could almost screen record where siri could like watch my screen and see my actions and see what i'm doing and then in the background i get to explain of what i'm trying to do maybe before the, the I, I show her the screen or during this during the screen sharing whatever this this teach me mode or watch me mode is where Siri can look at your screen, understand your actions, and then take from that of what you're trying to do, help you build an automation, an intent, a shortcut, whatever we're going to call it, and then create these crazy automations which you can delegate work to. Now, see how we're, con we're, we're connecting visuals and we're connecting conversation. And also with glasses or a phone with a camera, we're also connecting, it's not just on your screen, you can also record something and showcase something that will, and, and that will also pull in information about what's happening in the world. So context is a very big thing with augmented reality glasses with cameras outside of them. Sensors are going to bring in a lot of information and be able to bring that information contextually into whatever you're trying to explain or delegate um, with your personal assistant will also be bringing in. So again, this is the multimodal aspect of it. Now, exactly which, form factor is going to be the one that wins out. Um, it's hard to say. It's hard to put a bet on it. If I, I you know, a, a cautious person would put his bet on like Apple or one of the big players. But we know that like they're also entrenched in their um, operating system. So the mobile operating system that they've been building out for nearly 15 years now and the desktop operating system that they've been building out for decades now um, since the 70s and the 80s and the GUI and all that 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 was attached with from Xerox and all that um, kind of concept Douglas where they designed like the mouse the keyboard and those became the primary interactions then the smartphone but the primary interaction was multi-touch uh, now we're moving into a world where the primary interactions are going to be yes gesture and eye tracking but voice is going to be a huge part and the operating and and, and voice is not just going to be explaining oh click that button, click that. Because remember, these visual kind of worlds, the desktop metaphor, A, is built on the the office of the past, which is not how we're going to be working. 
and and B, that's it's an it's a, it's an odd way of controlling a device where you're you're controlling the same boxes or the same um, prompts as your mouse as 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 were designed to be controlled with a mouse and to bring your eye tracking and say hey I need to look at that piece like that's ridiculous on a keyboard. Maybe if you bought some sort of amazing thing like Swipe, and now I'm, I guess I've gone on to digging on the Vision Pro, but like the keyboard idea of tracking that with eye tracking is crazy unless you had a swipe type of thing with your eyes where you could like look between your eyes and kind of get a sense. But why would I want to do that when I could use my voice to explain things? And keyboards are going to become less and less important when I can interact with my personal assistant in any mode. So that's a huge thing, right? So I've been... Um, digging on the AirPods and their I, the, the, their lack of being able to understand me clearly in like noisy environments. And this is where A comes in. This is where Whisper comes in. Um, and this idea of you need something that's not only always available, right? Because inspiration can strike at any time. And a personal assistant is not very helpful if you have to fish her out of your pocket. It, it might be helpful if you're doing an instruction, but if you're um, having a conversation an hour long, or you're thinking thoughts as you're walking down the streets and, and, it, and it inspires you, the idea of having to fish something out to in, start a conversation is not very natural. It will have, it's still powerful, but it's not the most natural. And also your personal assistant has to listen to you at all times. So if I'm on a busy subway, if I'm walking down the street and there's cars driving by or construction happening, um, you know, if I'm on a road boat, middle of a lake and there's splashing going on around me or if it, the personal assistant has to listen to me the whole time so they can get the entire prompt and understand what's happening. So I'm happy to see that AirPods is getting a firmware with iOS 18 and an update where voice enhancement is going to the next level and we're supposed to be able to have Siri hear us at all crazy moments. I'm going to test that out and see how great that is. That's a very, very big part. Privacy is a problem with voice because, you know, if you're on a subway and there's a bunch of people, you don't want to be dictating personal, you know, private things in your life or work things, things that they have no need to know about. Um, so there's definitely places where keyboards are good or you could even start looking into like um cool devices that i saw, saw um a couple of years ago where you can like mouth the words and you're wearing this piece that like picks up your jaw movements and is able to take that to text um or even mind reading like Neuralink or things like that but definitely that scares people but the idea of the conversation is incredibly powerful and to think that the conversation for a lot of people is like oh how is that a form of gesture to work with dialogue boxes that are designed for first the mouth and later the, the the fingers, like it's a keyboard. They're small little buttons. It's not designed to be looking at you with your eyes. Like the best way of interacting with the keyboard is with your voice, but then it's, voice is not really created into our operating systems of like proper search. Like that search bar is, is designed for, you know, a couple words, maybe a paragraph, uh, maybe a sentence. It's not meant for a paragraph or a whole conversation. So Things completely change when we start looking at the way that we connect with our computers as conversations. We're not connecting with an, we're not controlling a, a graphic user interface primarily, right? The the, for, the the format of a conversation is being able to create things that a UI would take us ages to be able to click and type and, and tap and, and tags and things like that. There's so many things that make absolutely no sense to create a UI to control them with your voice. It's a completely separate way of doing things. If you've ever done prompting and you've gone to incredibly complex prompting as as the beginning of all this we went into prompt engineering and you took all those skills and 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 um um different um when, when people give you suggestions of how to like prompt properly and you took that and learned how to actually speak to your personal assistant and as those personal assistants got, got better so like you didn't have to like really engineering we you could just like go on a rant or go on a speech thoughts off the top of your mind will be a huge way that you interact deciding, do I like that? Do I not like that? That will become a conversation, changing an entire design, an interface, a, 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 an entire website, an entire document, just by the by, by, by your words. And not because like, oh, I want you move that over three pixels or I want, you know, the color, um, I want this hex color. No, the conversation, because you're going to be going into the story behind it. And that's going to come incredibly powerful in the computer of the future is going to be the soul, the story, the why, the how, the what, the things that we've been built in, like the golden circle, the idea of like, what's your mission, the values, the goals, like, give me the, the, the source behind the document, the file, the website, wh whatever it is that you're trying to build, conversations will probably, will knock that out of the park nine times out of 10. That's incredibly exciting of what those are going to be um, bringing on. Connecting that with uh, interface of the future is phenomenal. Anyways, 